Hey, it's Dougie Wood, and in this video, I'm going to be comparing SharePoint communication sites versus SharePoint team sites. I'm going to be breaking this down for you step by step. I'm going to explain the difference between a communication site and a team site, the pros and cons, and why you would use one or the other. So starting off with, I'm going to be talking about SharePoint communication sites. And here's a good example of a SharePoint communication site. Now, SharePoint communication sites used to be referred to as a publishing site in SharePoint. And I think that's actually quite a good name for it as well, because th there's two kind of things that you're doing with one of these communication sites. One, fundamentally, is about communicating information to a wider audience. Quite often, communication sites are used for your internet homepage um, because a lot of people are going to be accessing them. So it's not really necessarily just about a particular grouping of people using it, and that's where a team site would come in. I'll explain that a bit more later on. But a communication site is usually more for publishing to a wide audience, like the whole business or whole organization. You might have multiple communication sites, not just say you just have the one. Um, communication sites um, are, is the type of template. So actually, there's only ever two types of SharePoint site. You've got a communication site and a team site. Those are the two templates you can pick from. Where it gets a little bit confusing is you can also make a, a communication site a hub site. And that's where you get this hub navigation bar. And if you're not too clued in on what hub site is, go and check out my other videos. I've got plenty of videos about SharePoint hub sites which explains why you would have a hub site. Essentially, it's almost like that would be your landing page for internet. And then all other sites, um, you would have communication or team sites um, for, for things like department areas and other collaborational kind of areas. Communication sites are designed for broadcasting information to a wide audience. They're ideal for sharing news. So you could have things like slideshows and things like that, but also for having... Um, like navigation bars and things like that to make it easy for people to find things clickable buttons embedding power apps or um, other kind of third party things into your internet for people to access um they, they are very visual um so i'd say for sharing news reports documents and essentially trying to sort of convey a platform where people can easily navigate to things so quite often a lot of navigational links are used but also it's supposed to be very visual um, the key kind of features like we've got this home page design one thing when we compare a home page layout versus a team site which we'll look at in a moment is that communication sites are, are they just look way better and actually the functionality the web parts that you can use is all a lot more visual. It's all designed to look like a much nicer kind of intranet experience for your employees. Um, whereas a team site is more just for a smaller grouping and that they don't look as good. Um, weirdly, the, 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 the content of a communication site is always like centered with a bit of bleed on the left and the right. Whereas actually the content when we look at a team site, um, it, it's always kind of um, skewed to the left hand side. You'll also notice that the navigation bar of a communication site is always at the top and on a team site, it's always on the left hand side. Um, and that's actually the quickest way that you could identify whether it's a SharePoint team site or a SharePoint communication site by looking where the navigation bar is, because navigation bar will always be across the top for a communication site and it'll always be on the left hand side for a team site. So that's very quickly how you can identify um, the difference between them. Um, other key features, as I say, communication sites are typically um, audience that are much broader audience, I say organizational um, wide, um, whereas a team site is much more for a small knit kind of community. Um, the security works slightly different on a communication site than it does a team site. So with a SharePoint site, we have a permissions list and we can be very granular about the kind of level of access that we're giving to people. Typically, you have sort of owners of a SharePoint site which control the content and things like that. Um, and then you have just read only access for people that are going there just to consume information. Again, if you want more information about permissions of SharePoint, Go and look at my SharePoint channel. I've got a video that goes into a lot of detail about demystifying the SharePoint permission structure. Um, but that'll explain mostly um, for the, the kind of the permissions of a communication site. Whereas with a team site, you have um, a, a membership grouping uh, where that also gives you access to things like an, a shared mailbox or Microsoft team and things like that. Um, 
it's also quite different the content management when it comes to sort of creating news articles pages documents things like that um it the, the kind of users only have like one maybe two per communication site whereas actually with a team site usually everybody has access to go and create content because it's a collaborational space Here's another example of a communication site. You can see the navigation is still across the top. This site hasn't been enabled as a hub site because this, typically this type of site would probably sit underneath a hub site. Um, it's a new employee onboarding. So it's a type of site which is very visual. You can give a link to your new onboarders. They can go in, they can find information about how to get set up, how things like key processes like expenses work, getting information from HR. They can sort of meet other new team members if you're posting sort of um, news articles here who's joining and that sort of stuff meeting other people um, around the organization different teams what they do people they could reach out to the managers to sort of book in an introduction meeting or something like that again it's all about pushing out kind of information to um, the, the wider audience one last example of a communication site this is using a event kind of layout um, and this is an event that's coming up, leadership conference, got a countdown timer here. Um, we've got some Viva Engage um, chat boards on the right hand side for people to talk. Maybe we've embedded things like some pictures or some videos and a bit of information about the different days of what's going on um, on those different days of the conference. Um, latest news and things like that who's going to be at the conference the organizers and maybe some helpful links so you can see this is all communicating information to a wider audience they can go and get information about this event maybe see who the speakers are the, some frequently asked questions things like that it's all a consumption based platform so what are some pros and cons of communication sites then so the pros of ease of use it's simple intuitive interface for publishing content it's very very visual um, it's got built-in templates and web parts for modern attractive design all designed to look very kind of modern like a modern website it's all for about communication so ideal for sharing information news articles quick links things like that and it's very customizable it's flexible design options to suit various communication needs you could make it much longer i quite like the fact that we can use things like these colored sections so as you're scrolling through um, you don't have to click onto multiple pages you can just have a, multiple types of content on the same page but you can tell it's changing because as you're scrolling through um, the section colors are changing and this is a very kind of modern design that you see in a lot of websites as well what are some cons so um, in terms of the collaborational features um, of this it, it's limited because as i say it's not necessarily specifically for collaboration you still have a lot of the document management features that you would do inside of a team site um, but it's not necessarily that's what it's got first front of mind um, also the permissions elements of it are much more simplified on a team site compared to a communication site um, now it's not the end of the world it's not too difficult it's a very similar concept but the user interface and how the permissions are controlled are much simpler on a team site than they are on a communication site so just before we jump in and start talking about team sites i just wanted to ask a quick favor from you if you're enjoying this video please do subscribe to my channel um, if you've got any questions at all use the comments feed below and i'll try my very best to answer all of your questions also drop me a like if you're also looking for more SharePoint training content, go to my channel and join my membership um, with the other few hundred members I already have. Um, it's only 99p a month, but you'll get access to some members only content, which is a six part SharePoint training fundamentals course and also a Q&A area. So you can ask any um, more detailed questions. And I put priority on those um, to answer for my members also we've got some votes for things like different training courses that you'd like to see in here also we have um, a, a series which shows you how to build out your own shep intranet um, and of course if you need any professional services or support around sharepoint you can contact me using the link inside of my bio there's also a link inside the description of this video it'll take you to a contact form fill out those details um, and i can help you with any sharepoint requirements that you have so one of the last um, sites we're looking at, the communication site for event. Now this is like the, the, the 
I almost said public facing. It's not public facing in the sense of like it's externally accessible. I mean, it's facing the whole business is the information about a particular event, like a leadership conference that's coming up. However, in the background of all of this, there would have been a team, an event planning team that worked together to actually come up with this event, plan it and make sure it all goes smoothly. And that's where in the background where only the event planning team would have access, there would have been an event planning team. So this team site looks a bit like this. And if you remember, we can quickly tell that this is a team site because the, uh, the site navigation bar is on the left hand side. It's very obvious when you flick between the communication site, which has got it across the top, to a team site, which has got it on the left hand side. So that's, as I say, it's very obvious you can tell it's a team site. Also, you'll notice that all of this content on a team site is kind of pushed to the left hand side. I don't know why they never really got around to kind of fixing this, but again, it's another kind of visual way that we can tell that this is a team site because all the content is aligned to the left and you quite often have a big sort of bleed area on the right hand side of the design. And that's why I say one of the cons of a team site is the fact that they are very basic designs. They're not des they're not supposed to look great. They're supposed to be functional for collaboration. Um, uh, and they still have the same level of things like navigational options and things like that, but they're not necessarily for look and design. So this option, uh, this particular template we've got here, we've got some hero tiles across the top, it's helping people navigate around. We've got a events web part, which is showing us kind of key milestones which are coming up. So this might be as we're planning our event that's just coming up, there might be some key dates on there. So we know we need to sort of book in a venue by a certain date and we need to have a certain a risk assessment form that's filled out by a certain date or whatever it is key milestones that we need to have achieved for that event we can place in here as a reminder and all our team can see it we could also have an event countdown here so it's showing us where when this is happening it's building up a bit of awareness a bit of excitement around it key documents that we might need so any kind of insurance policies that we've taken out um, any kind of um, invoices maybe that we've um, incurred as part of this we can store all of those inside of our documents area here and we've also got a little activity feed to show us what's been going on what work's been done um, we've also got on the left hand side the ability to add in any links we want so we can link to sharepoint pages content files folders but also external things as well so if there was a website which was related to this particular event um, or, or the same kind of industry or themes or things like that we could provide links here as well um, we can have um, wiki pages so we've got a, a little wiki page here which shows a bit more about the event overview details of it key things which are going on locations of where it's going to take place and things like that we've got all of this information stored nicely inside of a sharepoint page we could also bounce into a team calendar um, so this could be a calendar um, that's actually inside of outlook as i was saying before what happens with the security of a team site is we get a Microsoft 365 group created which simplifies the access so we just have what we call members you can have owners as well um, but there's not a huge amount of difference from a SharePoint perspective of an owner and a member um, they can both go and create content and collaborate and that's the whole purpose because if you're comparing a team site to a communication site remember that team site is all about collaboration it's about enabling people to create documents create uh, files pages and share that all with inside of this team area because it's restricted to that say in this case event planning team it's nice and easy to add in members we can just drop, drop in their name in here and we've got a little ex explanation here of the difference between site owners and site members and what they can do but it's as I say, it's very similar uh, in terms of the, the kind of what they can actually achieve in here um i say it's very focused on documents so we've got all the kind of sharepoint document management version control all these different things that we can do we know that we love inside of sharepoint um also we get things like conversations now this is actually driven from um, outlook conversations we can also have a one note notebook which is assigned to the team also we have um the ability to add a microsoft team into this as well so you tend to find that that a lot of organizations have um, or they should make a clear decision whether they're going to be a SharePoint focused team or whether they're going to be a Microsoft Teams focused team first um, approach. Now, a lot of organizations I'm working with do use Microsoft Teams as their approach and they don't use a lot of the team site functionality. Um, 
that you get with this but obviously there's a few things that you get more with a team site than you would do just using a microsoft team for example the search um inside of a sharepoint team site is really really good because we can search for files folders pages news articles all sorts of things inside of here which you've got a much more restricted um search inside of microsoft teams so that's one good kind of reason why you might want to use a sharepoint team uh, site instead of a microsoft team although the confusion comes from when you when you have a microsoft team you automatically have a sharepoint team site created um, because when you click the files tab inside of microsoft teams what you're essentially looking at is the files that comes inside of a team site of a sharepoint uh, inside the documents here's another example of a team site just to show you again the navigations on the left hand side contents here in the, uh, in the center but aligned to the left um, and again more navigation options faqs buttons navigation people web parts to show who's who inside of a team um, documents activity and then some useful links there at the bottom so some pros of a team site it's all about collaboration it's much more collaboration focused than a communication site is it's excellent for collaborative work with features for co-authoring document libraries shared tasks lists that sort of stuff it's got a lot of integration natively as well so as i was saying um, it can integrate with microsoft teams directly um, planner OneNote. Uh, Outlook, shared mailboxes, things like that. It's got a lot of collaborational tools which are built directly into using this as a team site rather than a communication site. Um, sometimes I get asked the question about can you convert a SharePoint site to a team site or a team site to a communication site? The answer is no, you can't. So if you were looking at this um, and you're thinking, oh, I really like this version of it, I'm going to swap, you can't do that. You would have to create a brand new site and then you'd have to look to move or migrate those documents or content from one site to another so when do you use a communication site and when do you use a team site so use a communication site when you need to broadcast information broadly to a big large audience or the whole business um, the focus is, is on presenting information in a visual appealing way um, and there's limited need for any collaboration or a lot of document sharing it's about consumption it's about a small um, group of people one or two people a handful of people that are creating content and publishing it out to a much wider audience that are there just to consume it whereas a team site you should use when you have a team or project that requires frequent collaboration you need to share or co-author documents manage tasks and use collaborative tools the focus is on teamwork um, whether it be project management rather than broadcasting information to a much wider audience i hope you found that video useful and if you need any help with sharepoint um, we do offer professional services there's a link in the description below um, you can contact me and we can discuss your sharepoint requirements as always if you enjoyed this video you can like it um, also subscribe to my content uh, my channel to get future content and if you've got any questions at all you can drop them in the, the comments box below i do my very best to answer all of those for you also keep your eyes peeled for any future videos coming out from the channel thank you